All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a really easy audio reactive video where your logo bounces to the beat. First of all, I'm gonna go into my drums and all I want the logo to react to at the moment is gonna be the, the kick and the snare, I think. So I'm gonna go onto my mixer and I'm gonna rename this kick so I know which one it is. And then I'm gonna find an empty channel over here, so 15 I'll do. I'm gonna rename this react and then I'm going to go back onto the kick and underneath the react channel I'm going to click this up arrow and that will send the sound from this track through the react track as well but one thing we need to do is go on react and disable it from the master otherwise the kick is going to double up and we'll hear it twice like playing at the same time okay so next I'm going to go and find my snare which is in this second pattern so that's just track two. And again, I'm just gonna send that to the React channel. I've already disabled this channel from the master, so I don't need to do that again. And then I need to go and add Fruity Peak Controller to the React channel. And I'll leave all the settings as it is for now. And then we'll go back to the master. I've got Fruity Limiter on to make sure that my sound doesn't go over zero dB and distort. So I'm gonna leave that on and I'm just gonna move it up and then we're going to put Z Game Editor Visualizer on. So I'm just going to go and pick any of the tunnels for now, just so we've got something nice going on in the background. Yeah, that'll do for now. And then I'm going to go and add a new channel at the top here and I'm going to go down to Image, Effects and Image. So we haven't got an image at the moment, so it's just showing this default pattern that it's got. I'm going to go to add content and then on my computer I'm going to go and find my logo and I'm just going to drag and drop that straight onto this window here and then when I go back to image we've got this image source part here and I can choose my logo all right so now I'm going to right click on the size here and choose link to controller and I'll see that we've got peak control here, so I can just choose peak and accept. So I'm just gonna give this a test play. We're definitely gonna to need to make some changes, but we'll just see what it looks like at the moment. Okay, so I can see that it's making it really small. So what I'm gonna do is move these out of the way a little bit. I'll go to a bit where the kick is playing and we need to make sure this window is detached here so then it um, gives us a bit more space we can move this over because if it's not detached then you can't get it in front of the browser here so detached and then I can move it out the way a bit and then I'm going to go onto the mixer onto our react track and then we just need to play with some of the settings on here. So bass is going to be how big it is to start with. So, so I'm going to get it about there, I think. And then I'll test this again. And then this volume control knob is going to change how big it gets when it pumps in and out. So if you don't want it to get as big, you can lower the volume. If your CPU is starting to lag a bit, you can go down to Tools, Macros, Tools, Macros, and switch Smart Disable for all plugins. You should see a bit of an improvement. I'm going to detach the peak controller now so we can get a better look at what's going on. If we want the transition when it's pumping in and out to be a bit more smooth so it doesn't snap back so quickly, it has more of like a fade back to its starting point, then we can turn the decay down. So 
So we can see when Decay is up full, it's very snappy and it gets straight back to its position as soon as the kick's stopped or the snare's stopped. So it's up to you whether you like the smooth phase or the like the really punchy and fast one. So just play with the decay there until you're happy. All right, so that's about it for setting up your logo to react to the sound. You can, of course, add other effects and other layers underneath this or on top of it. So I'm just gonna quickly add a few more layers now and show you what you can do. So on top of this, I'm gonna add another layer. So we've got stuff like motion blur. But you'd want that down to the bottom. So we've added a motion blur and what I'm gonna do is go back onto the mixer track that we've got the peak controller on. I'm gonna go down to where it says save preset as and then I'm just gonna drag and drop it onto slot two. So now we've got a se separate copy here. And on this next one, this is the one that I'm gonna to link to the motion blur amount. So if I link to controller, I'm gonna go down and find the next one, which is down the bottom here. Accept. So I'll detach this one. Usually I'll do this over two screens because I've got I've got two monitors, so it's a lot easier if you drag some of the stuff onto one screen and then work on the other. So on this one, I can turn the bass down so it starts off not blurred at all. And then I'll turn the volume up. We could also um, assign the alpha channel of the image or maybe the lightness or anything else like that to one of these um, peak controllers. So I'll just try that with the alpha. Link to controller, assign it to the bottom one. And we could also do the alpha on here. So I'll also link the alpha to this bottom one here. Accept. We're going to insert another layer underneath the image. And then in this one can be peak effects and we can choose something else that will go underneath the logo. So when we're finished with our video, we can go and export it. You can do it this size if you want for YouTube or you can make it a square. So we've got one to one would be a square. 16 to nine is like the standard YouTube size or Facebook. And then if you want to do TikTok, you can do nine by 16, but of course you'd need to rearrange it a little bit, change the size a bit. So I'm going to change this back to 16, nine. And we've got the frame rate and all that sort of stuff, but I'm going to go to export video. And here as well, you've got all your presets for your different social media accounts. So I'm going to choose Facebook HD. And then you can change the settings here if you want, if you want lower quality or higher quality. And then you just call it whatever you want. Choose where you want it to go. So I'll just put it on my desktop for now. And then press OK. And this is the track settings. So this is going to be the quality of the track. And then you just press start when you're ready. 
And then this could take a little while depending on how long your video is and how many layers and how technical the editing of the video was. And you should have a video ready to upload to your social media platforms. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see me do any other videos like this on making videos and different audio reactive type of stuff, just let me know and I'll plan those in for in future. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.